Hey, good morning, Roman. Welcome to BC314, our course on media and technology. I've um, put up the PDFs for some of those um, classes that we had, the lectures that we had on uh, uh, print media, um, radio, television, films, and then uh, yesterday we spoke a little bit about entertainment and gaming and so uh, I just put up PDFs for that and just with little information I'm not you know it's not an exhaustive encyclopedia uh, information but just some outline some background in those areas so you can think about it and you know if there are people in your congregation or in your ministries uh, that are interested in those areas uh, uh, by all means encourage people um, to you know to use those forms of communication uh, to serve people within the church or outside the church in, uh, because God can uh, use those forms of communication uh, use media to touch and bless people yesterday uh, we started talking about uh, digital engagement did digital communications and engagement and uh, I'll just quickly review what we did and then start going into some practical things that we can do in this space. And uh, yeah, and just share some of the things that we've done and lessons we've learned. And, you know, we're continuing here at Our People's Search. We're continuing to learn and explore and, you know, get better uh, in this area. Uh, this is important digital communications and engagement, like we said yesterday. Uh, people are expecting uh, digital content from their local church or ministry, and uh, and it's it's a great opportunity, uh, but we need to learn how to do it properly, and also to keep up with um, changing times and um, so on. So yesterday we spoke a little bit about you know how do we formulate a digital engagement strategy for those inside the church, those outside the church. Uh, you, know, you can ask some basic questions and, you know, those answers, uh, answers to those questions will help us come up with some strategy. This is how we can in engage with people uh, on digital platforms. And uh, we also said that when you're thinking of people outside the church, it doesn't always have to be just uh, non-Christians, but it can also be the church outside your congregation. Yeah, there's the, the body of Christ, the larger body of Christ. You can serve them as well using digital platforms. And um, we then spend a little bit of time talking about, you know, how to really evaluate progress. Uh, we, we need to look at life transformation uh, as opposed to just uh, the engagement part. Of course, in the digital space, there will be some metrics they serve some. They serve some, to some extent, as indicators, but they're not the indicators we want to be looking at. We really want to see how have people been ministered to, how have their lives been changed, and then we just kind of ran through some examples. And you know, here's a little exercise you can think about. Okay, if I'm targeting teens or young adults, you know, how would I go about that? Now, how would I be able to formulate? Uh, a digital engagement strategy for that particular demographic. Uh, in, and again, you have to think about people that you're immediately ministering to, meaning people in your region. And then, of course, you can then think about people outside your region. Right? So today, we'll take a step forward and talk a little bit about websites. Um, this is very important. Uh, for a church or a ministry, you know, nowadays uh, people expect you to have it. So you think about in times past, um, churches or Christian ministries would have brochures, they would have printed brochures as an informational piece of communication. So somebody comes and says, hey, pick up our, you know, our brochure or pick up our monthly bulletin if you want to know what's happening in the church. And they would give out a printed piece of paper or pa maybe multiple papers, whatever. 
they give that out. And that would be a useful, useful way for people to know what's happening in this church, what's happening in this ministry, uh, what are areas I can be involved in, you know, and, and, and things like that, just to help people connect. Uh, today, things have changed. Uh, people are not necessarily looking for a brochure, but they're looking for a website. And your website, in, in one, in some way, serves as a brochure. It tells people, look, this is who we are, this is what we do, uh, and here are all the details that, about us. Right? So today, it's almost like a given. You've, you've a church or a ministry, you're supposed to have a website. You know, it's a place where people can look you up. And then, of course, there are many advantages of having a website. So I would encourage all of us, you know, as you're beginning your ministry uh, or your church, church or ministry, whatever you're doing, you know, think about this. This is very important. From as one of the ways you can digitally engage with people, uh, the people you are serving and beyond, right? So typically you'd have a kind of a web developer and a graphic designer to help you build your website. Um, so uh, what would you know? Typically, again, I'm not saying you have to do all these things, but typically you would want to use a content management system. That means uh, he, here's like you know a ready-made thing. It's almost like an IKEA for building a website. You know, when you, those of us who are familiar with IKEA, you want to build a table. You just order a box and they've got everything assembled and you put it together and you have a table. You don't have to go to a carpenter to do it. You don't have to start from scratch, right? So a content content management system is something like that. It's pre-built, it's got everything in it. Now you need to just set it up for your particular church or organization. And a web developer typically typically can help you do it and if you use a content management system then if you know you can also learn how to update the content on it uh, it's pretty easy so there are many different uh, content management systems out there some of the top ones uh, uh, WordPress is uh, I think the leading content management system uh, WordPress, uh, uh, then there is Joomla. Joomla is what we use at APC. Uh, and uh, then there are others, you know, uh, several others. And I'm just mentioned three here. There are a lot of different content management systems that you could use. Um, and these, of course, are built with certain software technology which a web developer would know how to use. Uh, the advantage of using a content management system is, uh, you know, it, you can customize it for whatever you want. Uh, it's easy, learning curve, uh, and it's easy for day-to-day -day use and maintenance. So if, you know, even you can learn how to uh, update the text and whatever in it, graphics and so on. And um, some of these platforms have literally millions of developers who work on it. So it's easy to find people to help you work on some of these more well-known content management systems. Um, those of you who have used Word, Word, WordPress or Square, uh, Squarespace, this, these are things you can do yourself. You know, Joomla is a little, not that straightforward, but WordPress, many of you may already have your blogs and so on on Word, WordPress. And uh, uh, they, they provide an end-to-end -end solution, you know, from domain. Um, you're registering your domain name and hosting and other things, so it's all easy to set up. Now, some things I want do want to mention here is when you engage an external developer or a company, an individual or a company to do this for you, very important, make sure that you keep full control, you retain full control of the website. Because you know, I, I I've seen, and, and I'm I'm speaking from our experience here in Bangalore. I don't know about how it works in other countries, but I've 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 had some churches and ministries, more than one, come to us and say, "Hey, you know, we engage this developer to do our church website, our ministry website. Uh, he set the whole thing up. Now he's got full control. Uh, now he's refusing to give it." you know, give us the credentials, log into our own uh, website to control it. And that's it, you know, they're stuck. 
and uh, it's not it, it was not a nice situation so we had to help them out of it uh try to negotiate get the get the credentials and then help them fix what they wanted to fix so i've seen on more than one occasion that kind of a situation happens so uh, i'm just saying hey if you're getting somebody else to do this work for you keep full control you have you know the administrative credentials with you uh, for your domain name hosting everything you know keep it in your control and uh, also have a clearly written contract in place you know again this is a big problem um, in churches and ministries they don't put a contract in place they just you know get somebody maybe from the congregation or some friend they know they say hey yeah you just develop it for us and so that you know initially it all starts out well but later on uh, when it comes to payments and you know support and maintenance uh, there's nothing written so then it becomes a back and forth and things get a little messy so i would say even if you're hiring your best friend to work for you put a contract yes there is friendship but work is work it has to be treated in a very professional way uh, write it down these are the terms on which we are going to engage with each other both of you sign off on it and then engage that person this is something many churches and ministries don't do and then they get into a lot of trouble you know a few months later so uh, just some things to you know um, forewarn you when you think of putting a website together the second thing uh, is you know uh, select uh, your website name your domain name you know uh, just some simple tips sometimes people don't think about these things but you know uh, select something that's short and easy you know, it's it's got to be short you know example um, our, the name of our church is all people's church and world outreach so we didn't you know if we can't expect people to type that whole thing out all the time so we just put apcwo all people's church world outreach so that's something short and easy you know uh, short uh, it easy right now uh, apcwo is not necessarily easy if you could find a name that that really sticks that's good um, but uh, over time, people associate APCWO with All People's Church World Outreach. They're, they're able to associate it. So it's not necessarily a good example of being easy, but choose something that, you know, it's almost like a mnemonic. Uh, then they, they will tend to remember that easier, right? Uh, choose something they can associate with your name of ministry, uh, something that's easy to type, uh, understandable words, um, and um, uh, if possible, uh, uh, use a mnemonic, right? So select your domain name carefully. Don't don't uh, pick a name that that later on you find. Oh man, that's so difficult to for people to type or people to remember, and so on. And then there's also a search engine uh, issues later on. So example, if there's a church called Hope City Church Bangalore, um, you know you would you would think of something like HPCB. Uh, .org, you know, Hope, uh, uh, HCC, sorry, Hope City Church, Bangalore. Or it could be just Hope City or something short and easy, you know, uh, that you would find. So, you know, we've we've just put out some examples here. Now, you can, of course, check the availability of your domain name in whois.com. So you can go there, see if your domain name, what you're interested in is available. Uh, Preferably, you would use a .org. Of course, you could use you know things that are specific to your country if you want to, or you know you could use something uh, different. Uh, you could use a .com, or nowadays there's so many other extensions available. Uh, so pick whatever is uh, is uh, you're comfortable with. But typically, uh, non-profit organizations would end with a .org extension. Uh, so just some tips there now once you do that you've got to register your domain name and you've got to set up a hosting provider somebody who's going to host uh, your website so um, the 
uh, domain registrar is uh, is the company that will you know record your name and the way it works is when somebody searches you know uh, types out your domain name uh, it goes out to it looks up you know goes to the registry uh, that's maintained by the registrar that okay this domain name has this IP address the IP address is like the unique address for that domain name that points to where it's being hosted where the website is being hosted looks it up then it goes out to that particular server and sends the information back to that person who's online right so that that's why you know you, your, your domain name has to be registered uh, so you usually you would use different regist hosting providers who would do the registration for you so you don't have to worry about it uh, you can find some hosting provider that's good in your country, in your region, or you could use uh, other providers, like we mentioned some here that are, that we use Hostica. Uh, you could use GoDaddy, or you can go directly to google.com and register your domain there, domain name there. There is some benefit of registering directly with Google. There, you, you may gain an advantage in terms of search engine optimization or, being found you may gain some advantage so uh, uh, but you can register anywhere and uh, so on and of course costing is a is a issue so think about who can give you the best price and what you're able to pay right so uh, you set up your domain name you register you, you go to your hosting provider whom you use you the, the your hosting provider typically will help you register your domain name and also you can get your website set up with that hosting provider so for example if you want to do it directly with google you can go to domains.google.com search if your name is there you know and um, we can get it set up there and you can also even host your website on google cloud um, they provide uh, space and ways to host your website so that's one way to do it okay now when you're building your website uh, I, I, will, I will definitely we'll, we'll have time for questions so I'm just kind of going through this content here information here and then I will take questions so now when you're building your website you got to think about well what kind of a website do you want to have and what are the objectives of your website so it's not like, okay, I'll just have a website. Well, what do you want to do? Whom are you targeting? And what do you want to do with this? Right? So depending on the people you are targeting, you would, you would design your website that way. So the theme, the look, and the feel of your website, right, has to kind of be geared or tailored towards your target audience now if you're if you're setting up a youth website of course you want to look you want it to be very uh, attractive very compelling for that age group if you're doing it like you know you've got a wide range of people then of course you do also want to care for some of the more classic viewers so would like something more simple they don't want anything to flashy they want information so on so you, you need to you know, look at the theme that would be best serve your people or if you're doing a website that is you know that is uh, you're for a ministry that is serving poor children well uh, you need a theme that that communicates that it's got to give that feeling that you know there's uh, you're serving these kind of people and so on so pick pick your theme thoughtfully and then what is it that you're trying to achieve through your website? Is it going to be mainly informational? Are you going to use it as a content repository where people are going to come there for resources? Uh, are you going to use it to raise money, uh, support for your ministry? Are you going to sell things on it? Uh, are you going to use it to get people to, you know, maybe register for your event sign up for various things you know what are the things what's what's your main objective so when you look at our church website apc.org our our main objective is this you know to provide content so we want to be like a global repository of information christian information uh, of christian resources right so that's our goal uh, 
Now, of course, we've got the other elements like, okay, yeah, we have to inf provide information on who we are, uh, what we do, what's our statement of faith, how are we organized, uh, what are the events that are happening, etc. Uh, those are there, but that's not the primary focus. Our primary focus is we want to grow into being a website that becomes a central repository for uh, content that disciples and equips believers, right? So that when people, you know, example, they want to learn about something, they say, hey, I'm going to go to APC website. I know I'll find sermons there. I'll find books there. I will find content there that's going to help me in that area of my Christian life and journey. Right? So we want to grow into that. So we've tried to design uh, and, and, and our website in that manner, with that perspective, emphasizing that while you know providing the informational aspects of it and other kinds of things that cater to our immediate congregation. So you need to think through, okay, what do you want to do with your website? And then typically you will have in your homepage, you'll have some information about yourself, what will new people do, what about upcoming events, who are the people responsible in the ministry, and how people can people find come to your services or reach out to you uh, or your church office and so on. Right. Um, just you know, mentioning some some of these may be very obvious, but uh, it's good to state the obvious sometimes. Um, use colors, layouts that are pleasant. Uh, you know, very important. Make sure there are no spelling errors in your text and your graphics. And sometimes we've made those errors, and you know, we've got to tell people, "Hey, correct it quickly." You know, and keep content up to date. You know, there's no if somebody goes to a website and they say, "Oh, the last time this page was up," you know, they're giving me information from 2000 or 2001. Uh, it's not current. The events are not current. Then it kind of leaves a very bad impression. Uh, that maybe this website is not being maintained, or maybe the church has ceased to exist, or whatever. You know, so keep content up to date. When there are cross links, uh, the links in your pages, make sure those links are all working. Uh, make sure that the website is intuitive and easy. You know, people should find the information they need. So one of the things is to have some obvious menu items, so that you know these are very obvious about contact. Uh, so that it's very intuitive. Okay, this is where I go if I want to find this information. Then, some of the useful things you can do when you're having a website is uh, have options without being a without being a pest, without being uh, you know too uh, in your face. Uh, have people give people the opportunity to share their contact details. Right, so. You know, you're not forcing them, but you're giving them a place where they could do it. And also, if they want to register for upcoming events, they could do it. Right? Then, of course, you can integrate your website with your social media, and so that people know where to go if they want to see you on social media. And lastly, uh, you know, make uh, make sure you web optimize your website for search engine. That means, if people are searching, you know, uh, they should find you because that is one way in which people are going to start coming to your church uh, or your ministry. So you got to localize your church as well as you got to globalize your church. That means, um, remember when 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 you search, especially like on search engines like Google or Bing or other, these are two primary. Uh, when you search on Google, uh, the way it works is it will localize the search based on where the user is. So if I'm searching for something in Bangalore, the first thing Google, the Google algorithms does is it sees if what I'm searching for is something that can be answered locally. Right. So if I'm searching for, you know, uh, a, a restaurant, it's not going to show me the best restaurant in Boston or anything like that. You know, if I'm searching for pizza restaurants, it's not. It's not going to display 
uh, pizza restaurants some other part of the world it's going to show me restaurants that serve pizza that are very specific to where I am so you know obviously Google recognizes where I am unless I do an incognito search typical normal search would be it says that I'm in Bangalore I'm searching for a restaurant that serves pizza pizza so it's gonna give me a list of restaurants that are right here close to where I am so it localizes the search depending on what I'm searching for if I'm searching for uh, you know books on divine healing for example healing and deliverance then that's not necessarily something that is restricted to where I am it's a generic you know what are the books that are good on that subject healing and deliverance so it will pull from uh, the universe the entire universe uh, the entire uh, you know uh, global uh, information available it could tailor it to my preferences if I have some history on doing similar searches it will of course tailor that in so Google indexes you know all the websites all the content of the websites and then in in showing me the results it's going to determine what are the best results to show to me based on where I am on based on the what I'm searching for so you need to think about this because suppose you know you have a website and somebody in your city is searching for a church to go to then you want your website to come up as high and as as uh, you know on on the search results page preferably on the first page right because typically people go to the you know the, they'll read through the first few results and sometimes they may go to page two or page three but generally they try to people act on what they see coming up on page one so so you have to optimize your website for people to find local people to find you because the other ones are going to likely come to your church on Sunday so for example I'm just giving this example uh, if people in anybody in Bangalore searches for a spiritual church in Bangalore then definitely uh, we would like our website to come up you know we'd like people to see that so you know for example I'm just uh, going to try to do that now um, so let me share let's see now what happens here so you know I'm in Bangalore so let's say I'm a person who's come to Bangalore um, I'm looking for a church and I want to go to a church in Bangalore right what would I most likely what would people do you know they would search for a church now what kind of a church would I like to go to I'll say hey I like to go to a spiritual church so what would I type I would you know I would type spirit build the church in Bangalore right so Google is showing me this map based on where I am and the first church that's listed here is all people's church right so you know we've optimized our website to show up for that particular search result spiritual church in Bangalore so people it's very highly likely they'll click on us now these are you know listed uh, 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 we'll talk about this a little later where you can you know list your church in Google business and, and uh, it'll pick it up from there but this is this is the result of just crawling a website right? so of course there are other churches listed here right now suppose I say I want a word-based church right that means you know, okay some people want a spiritual church somebody say I want a very word-based church in Bangalore so I'm looking for a church now, again you know all people's church comes up right on top yeah so again we've optimized our website for that you know um, search so 
they'll, they'll, it's highly likely they'll click on it and go look look for it. And so, like this, there are other terms that you could optimize your website on. So, we, for example, if somebody says, "I want a charismatic church," charismatic church in Bangalore. So, these are you know being listed there, and then you see again, all people's church comes up right on top because again, we've optimized our church website for that charismatic church phrase. So, like that, you can optimize your church. Um, website for different search phrases you know uh, um, and you know we've we've done that for our bible college as well so if i look for you know um, uh, i mean bible college i can search for uh, spirit filled bible college I can say bible colleges in Bangalore, I'm, I'm looking for that, and there are a lot of Bible colleges. APC is listed as uh, one of those, and um, but then you'll see APC Bible College right on top, right? And of course, we have a Bible College page from our main website, but we also got the Bible College page optimized for that kind of a search. So, or if somebody says, "I want to, I want, I want to know free Bible colleges." Free Bible college, um, Bible colleges in India. Let's say anywhere in India, somebody searching, they do this. So there's another institute that's result listed on top, and uh, let's see, an APC Bible college is right there, like number two in the in the list. Right? So we've optimized it for those kind of searches. So like this, there are a lot of other things that you can do. Now, think about this. Suppose I'm anywhere in the world. Uh, are you? Are you are, I'm assuming all of you are seeing my screen, right? Yeah. Okay. You're able to see my screen, right? Thank you. So, suppose I'm somewhere sitting anywhere in the world, and I, you know, we can change geolocations. I can show you how to do it. But suppose I'm searching for, uh, you know, I, I'm searching for a book. I, I want a, a book on example healing and deliverance healing and deliverance um so here's it's showing me a local church that's doing healing and deliverance and um, and then you see here our book on healing and deliverance is listed number four here right on top right so this is our apc book uh, ministering healing and deliverance and you know you've you've uh, done that we also run here weekend schools that's also listed here so uh, now if i change my geolocation to some other country so for example i open an incognito window and i pretend i'm in the us so i go to google.com slash uh, geolocation is us all right so i'm changing my search that means I'm pretending I'm in the US right now. So uh, so you, here you can see that it doesn't it doesn't recognize that I'm in Bangalore. There's no location given here. I have uh, I'm using an incognito window that means it's not using my local information. I've set the geolocation to US. That means I'm going to do a search as though I'm living in the US. Now here if I search for uh, you know um, book on Healing and deliverance. So this is U.S. result, right? So all these books are there. There's a Amazon book, and let's see if we get listed somewhere here. Um, okay. So our APC book, free book, ministering comes up here. So that means. In the US, if somebody searches for a book on healing and deliverance, they're going to see our book uh, from APC, right? Uh, again, so we have optimized our website uh, for a global audience. So that means anywhere in the world you search for healing and deliverance, you will get this book. Uh, you will see it, of course. There are a lot of other people who have other books as well. But what, I'm, what the point I'm saying is uh, you can optimize your website for a local audience, also for a Global audience, right? Um, 
and, and so on. So we could, for example, if you search for a book on uh, wonderful, no, I'm searching as I'm, I'm in the US, wonderful benefits of So there are other books that are listed here, but then you see ABC's book, Wonderful Benefit of Bringing Tongues. So somebody in the US searching for this kind of title, they'll, they'll be able to see our book, right? So, um, okay, so I can close this incognito window, come back. Okay, come back here. So uh what was i saying yeah so what i was saying was that um you can optimize your website uh, for these keywords so think about it first think about it locally that means within your city how would people search for your ministry or for your church right what would the key terms that you know, what kind of people do you want to attract? So, for example, like I showed you, uh, when it is, you know, spirit-filled church, charismatic church, or Bible-based church, or you can even search family church, or, um, you know, Pentecostal church, or, or whatever those terms are, which you think people will search for. You know, they will look for that church. Somebody goes into, you know, a city, they'll search. They'll, you know, they'll search. Uh, and they will find then they should find your church website, uh, hopefully on the first page. Then it's a highly likely thing that they're going to, you know, of course they will look at location, how far it is from where they're living, et cetera. And it's highly likely that they will come to visit your church, right? So that means you're not just having a website, but you're optimal, you're, you're, you're kind of, you you you're using your website in a way to reach people because that's something common people commonly do when they're looking for a church they go online and search so they should be able to search your website now the other thing i was pointing out is that your website can become a content delivery system to people anywhere in the world right so uh, uh, how can you do that? So once again, you can optimize your website and the content that you have on your website uh, to be available for a global audience. So like I was just showing you, if people search for certain content that that, that is available uh, in APC website, it is highly likely that it we will come up uh, on on the first page or within the first three pages, now anywhere in the world, anywhere in the English speaking world, of course, because our website is in English. So in the English speaking world, if you search for that kind of content, it's highly likely we will be there because we've tried to optimize the website for a global search, right? And there are ways to do it. Um, uh, you know, the, 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 the the, the people who understand search engine optimization will be able to tell you, look, these are things that you need to do uh, in order to make your website uh, uh, rank high uh, in certain keywords and phrases and so on. The point I want to uh, get across is uh, don't just make a website and say, okay, we have a website for our church. That, that is good. That's a first step. But think about how the website can help you reach out to people how you can make your website as a way to get what you have out there. Remember, uh, just putting content on a website doesn't mean people will find it because there are literally millions of uh, websites, all kinds of websites. So in order, uh, in order for your content to be useful, it has to be found. And in order to find, for it to be found online when people are searching, there is a way to make it happen. That is, you know, we call it search engine optimization. So there's a way to do it. So we intentionally, and it's it's an ongoing work, you know, we've been doing this all on and on and on. Every week we keep searching, we keep analyzing how 
uh, our website is doing and we have to keep improving it anytime we go to sleep <laughs> the ranking can go down so uh, and we have to keep looking at various uh, uh, aspects of uh, optimizing the website it's it's an ongoing work uh, you can never say it's over it's it, it keeps on going okay um, Abraham's question uh, about other languages should you have two different websites to focus on different groups or one website to change the language um, so what I would um, I mean, at least the way we are doing it is we are having different websites in different languages for example, we have our English website, which is what we saw, but we have a separate Hindi website. So, but it is there. Are, there are two ways to do it. One is you can have it as a subdomain. Uh, that means we have it as Hindi dot apcwo dot org. So it's like a subdomain, or you could even have it as uh, uh, a separate page, so you could, it, you could have it, for example, like apcw.org slash Hindi. It takes you to a separate set of pages, or you could have it entirely different, like apc Hindi dot something. Right. So there are three different ways you can do it. You can have it as a subdomain. You can have it as a different set of pages, or you can ha have a different domain name. Uh, for the website, um, there are pros and cons, and one of the criteria, at least, you have to think about is how would that affect the overall ranking of the main website. So, uh, so the way search engine happens is when you have a subdomain, uh, the ranking of your main website gets divided uh, into some measure with your subdomain, right? So then you might tend to compromise the ranking of your main website if you have too many subdomains that you're also trying to push. So you have to think about that carefully. Uh, uh, and so, uh, of course, and then the, 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 there are the other factors, which is, you know, the people who are going to maintain the website, you know, uh, or would would they be the same people doing it, or would you have different people doing it to handle different languages? So it's kind of a I would say I don't think there's one straightforward answer to it, Abraham. Uh, uh, you know, if 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 the same people can maintain both, that's great. Then you just you know you could have it as a subdomain or just add on a few pages to um, in that language have it. Uh, you know, like slash Hindi or slash whatever the language is. Um, yeah, so I, so I cannot, uh, I guess I cannot give you a straightforward answer, meaning this is always the right answer. Uh, uh, there are these various factors that you need to think about. Uh, what I can say is you have to be a little careful when you create subdomains under your main domain because then it compromises the ranking of the main website so that will be a very important factor to think about before you get on to creating multiple language websites um, yeah so yeah I'm sorry I'm not able to give you like a firm clear answer because there are a lot of different factors that go into it Mm, I can say what we have done is we've created Hindi as a subdomain, hindi.apcwo.org. That's how we've done it. But publicly, we 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 inf when we tell people, we say apcwo.org slash Hindi. So we give them a URL, apcwo.org slash Hindi. When they type that, it redirects to the subdomain, hindi.apcwo.org. Uh, that's how we've set it up. Okay, yeah. Um, any other questions uh, on 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 websites? Uh, is it getting too technical? Are 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 you all with me? I, I don't want to get too technical. Then I might lose some people. But 
your is is it okay now? It's you're able to digest what I've been saying. Yes, perfectly, perfectly fine. Okay, all right, all right. So that's good. So when you're creating your website, think about these things. Let me just go back to the notes and see if uh, something I can just cover up in the next few minutes. Yeah. So think about you know how you want your church website to be found. Uh, one important thing is uh, one important key to being found is to use search engine friendly URLs. That means you know in the URL that you're using for your web, web pages, uh, use the words and phrases that people would, would use for their search. So this is a simple key, right? That try to use it. So for example, if you go and search, you know. Um, Online church, you're very likely to find us, yeah, APCW.org, up, you know, on on high ranked, you know, the number one or number two. You'll find us there. I'm talking about in, in locally in Bangalore. Somebody searches, you know, online church. So even if they want to stay home and watch online, uh, we have intentionally uh, optimized our website so that they will find us and they could join us online as well. Um, the other important thing to do is to list your organization in Google business. Okay, that's pretty straightforward to do. So we just go to google.com slash business. There, you can add your information and, um, um, and the information about your church or your ministry. And uh, is uh, when you give your address, It'll show up on Google Maps. So, in some of our search results, you know, you were seeing a Google Map with um, with the location of those organizations that met that criteria. And also, when you list your business, you can put in keywords, right? So you can say, okay, my business is known for we provide these kind of services and these kind of things. So it's very it's a free listing. It doesn't cost you any money. You just do it. They will verify your business, so they will, you know, either call or they will send a postcard to that address. So the, Google has, you know, it may it may vary locally how they verify it, but they'll verify that you know, you are a legitimate business or registered business. You have that place, uh, so that is your correct address, and they verify it. So then your business once your listing goes live, it's it's a very it's a free thing. It's not not complicated, uh, and uh, the other thing is how many uh, for you to be ranked high of course uh, it also looks at how many people have liked your business so that's something you need to drive you know like the more people have liked you on google etc you know, your your rank is going to go up higher so but that's a simple thing to do uh, in terms of listing your business or it gives you um, a, a chance to be found and uh, located on google map when people search for church or Christian ministry, and so on. Uh, another, maybe I'll just cover this last point. Uh, another important um, thing to do is to try and cross-link back to your website. You know, it's it's called citation or cross-linking. That means other people are referencing your website. They're linking to your website. That helps increase your overall ranking. And so. Uh, uh, there are different ways to do it. You can list your business in, you know, st various standard directories like your Yellow Pages and other uh, uh, sites and uh, um, directories. You can list it, or you can list it in other unstructured citations, articles, blogs. When people write about you, uh, they link to your website. That helps increase your overall ranking. So just you know, so a way. These are things that you can put in, put your information on and link back to your main website. And lastly, uh, submit your website to Google Search cons Console. Right. So you, you log into using your Gmail ID, log in there to Google Search, and list your website. Now this requires a little bit of technical help because they give you a little piece of code that you need to put into your website so that they can verify it so you can have your developer do it for you and so once you uh, do that then google is going to be able to you know will crawl your website and basically when you submit your website to google search console uh, 
Google will crawl your website and you'll also have a report of uh, what it does, meaning, you know, if your links are broken or something's not right, Google will alert you to it. Now, you don't have to list your website in Search Console for Google to crawl your website. It automatically will try to pick up everything that's out there. But this helps, definitely. Uh, and you can submit your sitemap and so on. So just tell your technical person to do this for you. and. Um, you can uh, get it up and it, it's a it's a good thing to do okay i'll pause here we'll continue this next week um you know i'm just uh, sharing things with you that would be useful when you have your website uh so that it can actually serve it can be useful to your church or your ministry and also useful to people globally okay any questions before we close for today So my question is a very basic one, Pastor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that are we supposed to develop the website, or we need some technical or some uh, qualified person to you know do that? Mm. So uh, if you use example like we said uh, WordPress, uh, you can actually with a little bit of learning you can do it yourself. It's pretty simple. So you can even set up your own blog, or you can set up your own website under with, with WordPress, which is a content management system system. And they'll tell it'll make they'll make it easy for you to update your content. So you can register your domain name, they'll kind of set it up, you know, it'll be set up for you and so on. Now if it is something that's totally new, then yeah, uh, it's good to get um, uh, a developer to uh, help you out with it and uh, set it up for you. Yeah, so I would say maybe initially, you know, it's good to get a developer set it up for you, and then if you can learn how to maintain it uh, the, through using the content management system, then it should be easy to update the content, post new pages, and so on. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, let's close. Um, could somebody please pray with us and close? Uh, we will dismiss after that. Anyone could pray? Okay, let's pray. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this time, Lord. To keep ourselves, Lord Jesus, and help us to help us to be God, to be a kingdom minder and earthly wise, Father God. We pray that Lord Jesus, this time, as we are learning all these technical things, this media, we pray that Lord Jesus help us to know Father God so that it will be helpful to the coming generations, Father God, and we can use for your ministry, Father God, for your glory, Father God, to reach out to the peoples, Father God. Thank you, Lord. We submit all of us to your mighty. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, everyone. Have a good evening, good rest of the day, and a good weekend. See you all tomorrow, uh, next week, sorry. God bless. Bye now. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, everyone. God bless you. God bless. Thank you.